Hi, I'm Rhino. I'm a physicist, and this is how to find a speed from a distance and a mass. Now, you can think about a ball at a certain distance above the surface of the Earth. And we can call this distance h, and we can say this ball has a mass m. Now, if we want to find its speed, we, the easiest way is to use the conservation of energy. So, when the ball is just sitting above the Earth at an instant, it has no velocity, it's just about to be released. So you can say E initial is equal to merely potential energy, which is equal to M times G times H. And the final state, when the ball is just about to hit the Earth, H goes to zero, so MGH is zero. And the energy is merely kinetic energy. So energy final is equal to one half mv squared. Now, using the conservation of energy, we can say that energy is not created or destroyed. We can set the initial energy equal to the final energy. And we find that mgh is equal to one half mv squared. Now, fortunately, we don't need the mass to find the speed because it just cancels on both sides. And if we multiply both sides by 2, we find that 2 gh is equal to v squared. Now we can square root both sides, and we find that the square root 2 gh is equal to the velocity. Now we know that the g the, is merely the acceleration due to gravity on the ball. And it's 9.8 meters per second squared, but it's very convenient to approximate it to just 10. So if we say g is 10 meters per second squared, this term turns into 20 meters per second squared. And h, we can say the ball is 1 meter above the surface of the Earth. So it's 20 times 1 inside of the radical. And don't forget your units now. It's meters per second squared times meters. So we have meters squared per second squared inside of the radical. Now when we square root the units, it simply turns into meters per second. So we find, if I write the velocity on the left-hand side and the left-hand side on the right, that the velocity is equal the square root of 20 meters per second. So, in this example, we have found the velocity from the speed, and we found that we did not need the mass. I'm Ryan Alt, and this is How to Find the Speed from a Distance and a Mass.